Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture 18 where we are going to study writing of case comments. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, welcomes all of you over here. So uh, I would like to ask you that have you ever pondered that what is the need of drafting a case comment and what is the need and what is the difference between case comments writing? and case laws when we talk about when we talk about case comments what are the things that we should think about what are the important factors or essential requisites that we have to focus upon now in this case let's talk about the particular thing and after completing this lecture my dear learners you would be able to learn something that is really relevant to all your uh, arena or your working field, you would be able to understand the importance, uh, importance of drafting a case comments, comments and further you would be able to learn how to write under blue book legal citations because legal citations they are in APA style, MLA style but for legal people for, who are from legal background they have to quote, they have to cite on the basis of blue book uh, pattern. So, sample analysis of a case comments, you must uh, like I have already come up with several uh, sample analysis, how you can come up with case comments and uh, there is a pattern through which or the format you have to follow in order to uh, draft uh, an impressive case comments. Then you would be able to use a proper metaphorical and syntactical pattern that means like a perfect usage of uh, POS part of speech then along with grammatical structures you would be able to talk about the functional and structural categories along with the active voice and uh, so and so forth talking about the tenses, times that is all like we are going to discuss in this case comments while drafting the case comments uh, section and then further you would be able to uh, like pleased to know about the content what are the things that we are going to study in this we are going to study the structure of case comments, the structure, the format and after that how to go on with research and citations. With research citations basically they will certainly tell you about the, uh, the, the, refers, the references that you have taken and then further case comment study Smith versus city of Elmwood, I have taken up the example of this, a fictitious one. But yes, for your guidance, I have taken up this thing so that you can definitely learn something more about it. Then you would be able to learn the case comment study Roe versus Wade 1973, a landmark decision for reproductive rights. So through these examples or specimens, you would be able to understand how case comments are written. Further, you would be able to employ the open and closed lexical categories. Open and closed lexical categories are like uh, uh, the POS that are categorized into two parts like uh, open and closed ones and then further these are few things that you are going to learn throughout this lecture and I am pretty much sure after this lecture you all will be a perfect uh, case uh, comment writer that is for sure. So let us begin with the introduction part and uh, thereafter drafting case comments for legal purposes nuances of English language this is again a very important one where you would learn all these nuances of English language and it explores the essential language nuances to help undergraduate learners while drafting effective case comments. So please refer this one for learning the case comments and uh, further moving ahead what are the steps that you are going to take up when you talk about the case. Suppose you have to first of all select the case, which type of case you are going to 
talk about is it like as if i told you when we talk about case laws when we talk about case laws or case uh, like uh, laws basically they are divided into two parts as if i told you earlier also they are divided into two parts the first one is landmark cases the first one is landmark cases and the second one is recent cases so in that condition now it's your way of dealing that which type of case you are going to opt landmark case or recent case but remember you must have a thorough knowledge about that case then only you would be able to acquire or write a perfect case comment on that landmark cases if i talk about then we have ak gopalan case then we have uh, several other cases like uh, Keshav Nanda case, then we have ADM Jabalpur case, then further we have Vish, uh, Vishakha versus the state of Rajasthan case, then we have several others like uh, Parmanand Katara versus uh, uh, like uh, Union of India. There are many landmark cases. Many students complain that ma'am, how are we going to learn those cases? But in that condition, I would like to tell them that actually spare just half an hour every day and half an hour into 365 days. I am 100 percent sure that you all will be able to learn, you all will be able to acquire the sufficient knowledge about case laws very easily. So, select a proper case where you can definitely write very well. So, choose the legal case that is relevant to your course or area of interest. So, you must take up any case of your choice, any case of your choice for of which you have certain expertise on it. So, any case that I have uh, I exemplified earlier also, you can take up any case of your choice. So, any any uh, family dispute case or maybe any kind of constitutional case, maybe or corporate sector, it depends on you completely your call, criminal case. Uh, so, it depends on you, depending on the statutes that you want to follow or regulations that you want to follow or litigations that you want to follow, maybe legal precedents that you want to follow. So, based on that select a case on which you have the interest or you have the expertise on. So, ensure that the case have enough legal significance, legal significance that is it that that is the reason I am talking about two type of cases, landmark cases and recent cases. Recent cases require a lot of research work to go on. So, ample opportunities, ample scope is available, plethora of opportunities are available for exploring something new in recent cases. Yeah and complexity to make it worth commenting on yes so if you are working on that whether that working is going to help out or not this is again a very important part so select a case this is the first option which is really very important after selecting a case what are you going to do you are going to understand the case understanding means like you are going to talk about the Moral, uh, moral implications sometimes, sometimes ethical implications, sometimes the impact on the society, then you are talking about going to talk about the facts that are related to it. So, all these selection of cases goes towards the understanding of that case, which type of interpretation you are going to take up. <clears throat> Many people interpret in different manners. You must know that which interpretation is actually matching your interest. So, carefully read and analyze the case, this is again very important one and when doing it, pay attention to the facts that I told you, pay attention to the facts, it is very important issues, issues and legal principles, legal principles again a very important thing and the court's reasoning, court's reasoning that means court uh, holding, court's holding. So, finally, you can take notes as you read to capture the essential details. And many students they say, nah, I am taking notes is really very tough, right. But not always, when we talk about legal uh, documents, when we talk about legal lectures, taking up notes is not a difficult task, rather you can use some abbreviations while doing that, okay. For example, in the meanwhile while writing anything, obviously you cannot write abbreviations. While drafting anything, you cannot write, but for taking up the notes, of those lectures or maybe uh, writing and mesmerizing everything in short form, yes, you can definitely go on with that. But and abbreviations for example, Union of India, UOI, these are acceptable, these are acceptable. But if you want to talk about that is, 
or if you are going to talk about any other small abbreviations, they are not required. Okay, everyone. So, notes, yes, for notes you can use abbreviation, but not for, I am repeating it once again, report whenever you are writing a case comment, you are not supposed to use abbreviations. Law reports, no. Case reports, no. Right. But while taking up the notes, maybe while attending the lecture, you can definitely write down in short form very easily and quickly. Okay. So, this is again, I will provide you the list, I will provide you the list of abbreviations that you can use in it while using, while drafting a, uh, notes, while preparing a notes for your learning purpose. So, but, but something like uh, this thing like uh, I have already told you, UOI, Union of India, yes, <clears throat> in that condition it is applicable. Further, if I talk about uh, different other things like, uh, let us talk about the next one. If you have understood the case properly, thoroughly, then move up to the next part that is structure of your case comment. Now, how are you going to find out the structure of your case comment? The typical case comment follows a structured format and in that structured format, you must know that it has a typical inclusion of certain parameters, certain aspects which are really essential. Now, what are these essential aspects? The first thing is introduction. Introduction will include certainly the title of that and it includes the uh, along with title parties that are involved or maybe uh, you can talk about the year. So, these are the things. It provides the overview of the case and its importance, right. So, introduction will tell you about that particular case. Second, which is very important is facts. You may come up with the facts and figures, data which is really related to it, the actual facts that are related to this particular field this particular case. So, facts are really important. It summarizes the relevant facts of the case. Relevant facts of the case. You cannot actually talk about any relevant thing while talking about the facts. No. These things which are relevant, which are to the point, please make sure to mention all of them. Right. So, facts are really very important. The second one is facts. First one is introduction. Second one is facts. Third one issues. You are going to identify the issue, identify the legal issue that is court had to address. What is the legal issue? Like suppose if there is environmental uh, protection act and if there is a kind of allegation on somebody that he, that he or she is responsible for uh, creating an ecological imbalance in the society or in the uh, like uh, in the particular area. Now in this condition, what is the issue? Uh, so according to section 33. Will that person be uh, sanctioned any penalty or will that person will have to go behind the bars for 5 years? So, this is the issue or is he responsible for that kind of uh, crime? So, this is the issue. Identify the legal issue that the court had to address. Fourth, decision. What is the decision of that uh, like uh, particular case? Like if that case uh, has some kind of decision, some court holdings, then you must come up with that, explain court's decision and the reasoning behind it. Like whatever decisions court has taken, why? Raise the question why and what, right? So why and what remember? When you get the answer of what and why, obviously you would be able to get down the answer of decisions. That why government has taken this decision and what is the decision clear. So, this is again a very important part, decision taking, what is the decision of that case comment, what is the decision of that case. Analysis, what is the analysis part, what is your opinion? Because analytical power is actually very much important when you go to this particular stream. Judiciary, in that judiciary aspect you must know that these things are very important. Once you have that kind of analytical power, interpretative power, you would be able to analyze everything in a proper manner. And in that condition, you just remember that analyze the court's reasoning. What are the foregrounds on which he has taken this decision? You must know. Then and discuss its implications. Discuss its implications means you are going to discuss the impact of that particular reasoning, that particular, uh, you can say, 
the result decision on the masses and then maybe uh, maybe you can come up with counter arguments also along with that at the end conclusion so introduction first facts if you have portrayed the facts third one issues what are the issues that are related to that court uh, case law then fourth decision after that decision come up with analysis which what is the analysis that you want to give the analytical power the interpretative power that you have you possess your own individual approach will be reflected to it and for last but not the least the conclusion conclusion will sum up your commentary and express your own opinions or insights yes so this conclusion will actually amalgamate everything that you possess the idea that you have maybe sometimes negative sometimes positive anything that you have so that is case comments critical analysis of that word critical analysis of that case decision this is the final comment which you want to give so that is what case comments are so you are not going to accept everything that comes to you you are going to maybe uh, sometimes come with the logical reasoning aspect sometimes come up with the kind of uh, reflection with the with your thoughts with your ideas sometimes reflecting some uh, merits or demerits so these are very important aspects when you come up with case comments so what are these what are these six elements that you have understood today that you have learned while writing that or you can say the structure the format the step by step acquiring that skill of comment writing case comment writing so first one is introduction you must mention the introduction second facts what are the facts related to it third the issues that are involved with this fourth you must talk about the the decision of that court and after that decision come up with the analysis part and conclusion so these are almost six part which are really very important in order to form a perfect case comment further after learning this pro format we are going to move further to the next part that is how are you going to come up with research and citations as if i told you that there are certain points where we will learn how to cite certain points certain books certain text references sometimes certain some uh, statutes some research work so here we are going to learn that how blue book is used for all these citations you are going to conduct additional research if necessary to provide context relevant legal doctrines and precedents so that means like if you are not able to find the recent the current uh, like uh, the required data you can definitely conduct an interview you can conduct a survey methodology or you can definitely go on with qualitative and qu quantitative research work so that you can acquire the data for the case case comments okay so you can definitely conduct additional research have you got the understood the idea that i told you qualitative and quantitative research you can go on with that you can prepare a questionnaire google questionnaire maybe float it among the people and then they should definitely reply on that if they are going to fill up that filling that form then definitely you will get the data okay so you can definitely add or conduct additional research to find the data okay so this is what research and citations are going to and proper legal citations to support your analysis it is again very important if you are quoting uh, keshav nanda bharti's case then obviously you have to quote that one if you have to quote some other case like suppose uh, if uh, the co uh, the if some statute is there if some statute is there for women benefits article 15 sub clause 3 is given like suppose if there is like that where the power of power is given to the state authorities or state government to implement any kind of law for the women upliftment for women upliftment then we have uh, maternity benefit acts then we have dowry prohibition act then we have a violence act domestic violence act then further we have domestic uh, violence act along with that sexual harassment at workplaces for women indecent behavior in repre uh, uh, indecent representation act so basically all these things are cluster of 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 so many knowledge so many things so many case law so many acts you must only come up with appropriate citation you can write anything and everything that clicks to your brain 
but there has to be a perfect citation. Remember, from where you have taken it, it is really very important when, when it comes to women upliftment article 15, right. So, you must capture that part, you must try to conduct or just highlight that part that women upliftment article 15 sub clause 3, okay. So, these things are very important when it comes to citation, okay. So, let us move up to the next part, when it goes to citation, there are uh, certain ways where you can cite uh, certain uh, like uh, books. For example, I have give, I'm, I've, uh, come up with certain slides where you can understand how you people can cite on the basis of blue book and US. So, here we are going to learn citations according to blue book. There are certain parameters on which you are going to learn these uh, citations and suppose you are going to cite US Supreme Court case. Now, in this condition there has to be some kind of format which you are going to follow and in that format what is the most important thing that you must for, for uh, you must actually focus on like if there is a full citation just mention the name of the case along with 410 US that is like the volume number and along with 113 that is the page number and the year. But please be very particular about the punctuation marks, right? Because these punctuation marks are going to work out very well when we talk about the citation part. So, this is the name of the case, the title of the case, then the volume number along with page number and year. So, this is full citation of Supreme Court cases further or maybe Indian cases sometimes. So, short citation could be through subsequent references. For example, instead of writing Roe versus Wade, we write Roe and 410 US that is volume number at 113 that is page number. So, these things are important and we, are, we can definitely exclude year in this. So, this is the whole explanation of citing a US Supreme Court case. And uh, in that condition, please be very particular about the name of that case, title of that case, along with volume number in which it has published. Uh, uh, then third part will be the page number and the year, when the case was uh, like when uh, it took place or for example, like uh, the first PIL for uh, uh, right to speedy trial was by Hussein Ara and in that condition, that particular Hussein Ara Khatun versus state of Bihar in that condition that was first time done in 1961. The first PIL was uh, like it started in uh, and, and maternity benefits if I talk about the 1961. So, therefore, like this is what uh, is very important. Further, we can talk about how to cite a federal statute. When there is a federal statute, you must know how to cite it. Citation is very important. So, what is the thing? 42 USC 1983 2021. In this condition, you must actually uh, try to bring about a reference of federal statute, specifically title. Title is 42, section 42. Section then 1983 of the United States Code. So, 1983 United States Code, USC that is United States Code. The year indicates the addition of the code used and subsequent references use the short form without the year. As if I told you that subsequent references use this without the uh, year most of the time. So, in that condition, this is how you are going to cite federal statute. So, for federal statute, the section number, after that USC and then year, uh, then 1983 of the United States code, the year indicates the addition of the code used, remember. So, these are the things and this is the whole thing where year has been skipped out, 2021 has been skipped out because this is short citation, right. So, you have learned in previous slide how to cite, how to cite Supreme Court case, right? Then afterwards, the second one is how to cite a federal statute. After that federal statute comes to the next category, 
where we will learn how to cite legal general article. Now in this legal general article you must know that full citation would be John Smith. John Smith is actually the general, it is the author's name. Yeah. So this is the author's name. After that the impact of Roe versus Wade on reproductive rights. This is the title, title of the general article. Right. The title of the general article. So this is the title. After this title, you must think about the volume. As if I told you, volume is important. That is 75 half L reference. So in that condition, that is abbreviated general title Harwell Reverend. That is Harvard Law Review. So this is what the full form of that, where you are going, not going to write the uh, full uh, form of this, an abbreviated form maybe. So half L rev 512. And then this is the page number and 1989 with full stop at the end that is the year, publication year, right? Is that very clear everyone? So you must be very particular about coming up with these things. I am just uh, erasing all this part because so that you may actually know the exact punctuation mark also. John Smith comma within quotes the name of the uh, title of that case or article. Then 75 uh, Harvard Law Review, that is the name of that particular general title and 512 is the page number with full stop after that. You can say period, period after that and, uh, and within brackets 1989 and then again period. So this is what the full citation of a legal general article. And after that, like how are you going to go come up with short citations? Yes, obviously, you are going to write not John Smith, rather you are going to write Smith, only Smith and then 75 Harv L. Reverence, that means the title of that journal and at 515, that is page number, 512. So this is what the whole sequence is all about. You have to skip the, uh, that will include author's name, volume, general abbreviation and page number. You can skip this year, okay? And you can skip this year along with the uh, title of that, okay? Along with the title. So this is again how you are going to cite a ge legal general article. Further, we are going to learn that how are we going to cite a legal case from a state court? So there has to be some kind of logic behind that and some kind of fixed format to understand this aspect. Full citation is Doe versus State. Now this is particularly the uh, legal case name and therefore this is New York. This citation refers to case from a state court in New York. It includes the case name. This is the case name. Remember 123 NY. This is 120 reporters volume, reporters volume 123 NY and page number, page number 123, right? And then further NY D2 that is parallel citation. So two citations are there. The first one is this 789 NE and the second one is this one. You can find this 123 NY 2D. 256 and 789 NED 123. This is addition, volume and page number. I am just deleting this thing otherwise this is going to create a problem of understanding. So if, if I am going to just talk about this thing, title of the, title of the case, this is one volume and page number. This is another volume and page number along with year. Is it clear everyone? I am just, I have just deleted everything because like otherwise that will create a problem of understanding. So just talk about this uh, comma, right? We use comma, then after that we use again comma where two, two different uh, page numbers are there with volumes and at the end after that we have year after that page number. We have year and period at the end, okay? Then what about uh, the short citation? Short citation, we have the name, just one, do. As if in previous one also, like where we uh, discussed about Smith, 
we we didn't mention john smith completely rather we shortened it to smith in the same manner here in the same manner here do only do 123 ny 2d that means i have taken only this uh, have taken this one 123 ny 2d at 459 clear so this is what at 459 is the page number this is the page number remember this is the page number and we are talking about only one volume one volume right instead of going on with this two these two okay so this is again an important part and apart from this is it clear to everyone so this is how you are going to uh, like cite a legal case remember cite a legal case for the same okay so let's move up to the next slide where we will talk about how to cite a legal secondary source when we talk about some case laws we have to refer several other textbooks we have to refer several, several other books also and in that condition full citation is done full citation when Jane, Jane Doe comma then constitutional law whatever the law secondary source that I am using the title of that secondary source constitutional law a comprehensive overview so the name of the book title of the book is on the second number the first one is author's name right first one is author's name right Jane Doe and then further the title of the book title of the book is constitutional law comprehensive overview after that title of the book the edition now this is the edition 2d ed edition 2d edition and the publication year 2020 clear period at the end period at the end period uh, before this uh, edition also okay either either we have uh, here we have written comma we have used comma then uh, after this we have used within brackets we are going to write down the edition and year so i hope the things are getting clear everyone my dear learners yes after that short citation as per uh, in all the other citations we have been doing that we will definitely use the initials only one and only single one and uh, the name of uh, the constitutional law that means we are going to skip the complete name a comprehensive overview so we are going to take only the constitutional law at 120 that is page number okay so this is what short citation is all about right so for legal secondary source we have to use this type of things then citing a supreme u.s supreme court cases u.s supreme court cases now in this case let's take an example in text citation whenever we talk about anything in the text and in the middle of it if i'm using some source then what and how am i going to write down with that footnotes uh, so in that condition in a landmark case of roe and wade 410 us that is edition page number year the supreme court established a woman's right to choose abortion so this is what the landmark case of roe and wade so full citation footnotes that is roe versus wade 410 us with a comma before that then period then page number i'm just going to title you can say title of the court case then this is edition this is page number and this one is year year of publication right so this is how you are going to come up with certain citations as per the blue book pattern so these were all the patterns all the uh, like citations that all the students may need over here while writing the case comments yeah so this actually plays a very important role learn it by heart because without citations and without references i'm 100 percent sure that you would not be able to do any justified writing okay so because this is really a very important task right so further moving ahead we are going to learn how to write clearly and concisely look 
we have certain grammatical, I told you that we are going to learn metaphorical and syntactical pattern along with open and closed categories. So, in this condition you must remember that when it comes to metaphorical and syntactical pattern you must talk about the legal maxims, you must talk about the clauses, the phrases, you must talk about the POS parts of speech with closed and open categories. So, how are you going to talk about writing in a very clear and concise manner because nobody is sitting idle at home or somewhere else to read out your long long compositions. Try to use legal maxims so that it may convey maximum ideas through minimum words. Okay? So, write your case comments in a clear, concise and organized manner as if I told you what is the pattern, what is the format of writing a case comment. It must follow only six, uh, that like there are six stages through which you can definitely draft your case comments and make it more interesting and appealing. Further, you must avoid jargons and use plain language wherever possible. This is again a very important one. Further, be mindful of your target audience. Who, who is your target audience? Who is going to read that particular thing? So, this is again a very important part. Who is the target audience? According to that target audience, you can change the whole pattern. You can change your writing style, you can change your language, you can change the jargons, you can change the style, so and so forth. Yeah. So, remember whenever, whether it is your professor, legal colleagues or broader legal readership. So, you must identify the audience first and then move further. Yeah. So, this is what writing clearly and concisely in a very precise manner come up with your idea. In the analysis section, so provide your analysis because this is what where you, your personality is judged, where your perception is judged, your interpretation is judged. So, in the analysis section, offer your own insights and opinions on the case. Own, that is again a very important part. Because this thing only going to tell the readers, the audience that whether how much depth you have, you have in your learning, okay, and in your thinking process, which is really very important. Now, further moving ahead, you must discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the court's decision. Whenever it comes to court's decision, how much you are satisfied with that? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses that you have? Its potential impact on future cases? Any unanswered questions and issues it raises? So, anything that he has missed out, anything that court has missed out, you can definitely point out that part. And that is the reason why even after court cases, PIL are filed. Whatever courses, whatever court has decided the decisions that they have taken on the basis of that again PIL is filed against these courses, these, these uh, case laws. So, be ready with your analytical power because that analytical power or interpretation will give way to few other uh, future law policy makers sometime. So, that is what very important. Revise and edit. Because this thing is going to help you out in learning something new. You are going to develop how to revise, how to edit everything. I told you that proofreading is again a very important thing. First draft, second draft and then final draft. Show it to your peers, get the feedback. Then try to make the amendments in the, uh, in your uh, writing, uh, in, your, in, your, in your comments basically. So that you can definitely work out very well and exhibit a perfect picture of any case comments. So, before submitting your case, these are few things, clarity, grammar, coherence, logically and uh, you, you should focus on arguments that flows logically and your writing which is free of errors, right? So, you must focus on grammatical usage, correct usage of words, legal maxims and phrases and before submitting your case comments, thoroughly proofread it. Formatting mistakes should be avoided, grammar, spelling mistakes should be avoided etcetera, so and so forth. So, you have learned the format that is very much uh, like with you, what is the size, margins, the spacing, because this is a legal draft to be shared to all. It is not going to be to meant to only specific class of audience, no. This is like once you have uh, written a case comment, you can get it published also. So, that others can also read it and get some kind of like motivation or inspiration through your analytical study. 
So, yes format uh, if there is any kind of format which is required which is uh, there by your instructor which is provided by your instructor or public for publication please apply that format and uh, seek feedback this is again a very important thing if you ask peer pressure, uh, professor to review your case comments and provide feedback before finalizing it because these things are really very important if you talk about case comments they are they are really a thoughtful analysis of everything that you do every now and then and then further if uh, tailor your tailor your commentary this is really very important tailor as if tailor stitches the clothes you have to stitch the commentary in such a manner to create a beautiful beautiful attire for anyone so tailor your commentary to your specific audience and purpose whether it's for the class assignments legal journals or another publication remember so now i have come up with the specimen i told you that i am going to take up the example of some specimen where i would like to show some uh, like through on the basis of that format you will learn how to draft uh, a particular case comment and this is the case comment that i am going to focus over here smith versus city of armwood now in this condition first of all i told you that introduction part after introduction you must focus on facts like once these facts are there like uh, you will try to come up with the analytical part analyze those facts and further you come up with decisions so here you are going to learn how to draft that case comments let's uh, take a look first of all introduction as if i told you the case of smith versus city of armwood is a notable decision looking uh, please focus on the tense that have been used grammatical aspects metaphorical and syntactical pattern which is really very important so the case of smith versus city of armwood is a notable decision in the realm of municipal liability for police misconduct this is the whole case all about the, this case raises critical questions about the scope of qualified immunity qualified immunity and the duty of municipalities to supervise train law enforcement and in this case you must remember that law enforcement officers and we will analyze the facts issues implications of the court's decision so this is the first thing introduction will incorporate all the part that you are going to deal with everything that you are going to discuss is there in introduction part the facts which are there what is the decision it will have the implications it will have the issues it will talk about the uh, anal analysis of the facts everything will be incorporated in that introduction part second we come to the facts facts includes the figures and data that you have accumulated for that case comment so in this case look at this in this case john smith a resident of armwood that means you are creating a background to it alleges that he was subjected to excessive force by officer james rogers so this is the whole case all about during a routine traffic stop smith sustained injuries right during the encounter and filed this lawsuit against the city of armwood claiming that the city was liable for the action of its officer so the person is not actually this john smith is going to claim the Uh, the municipal authorities or maybe the entire police authority and the state who is responsible for this kind of like breakdown so there he says that claiming that the city was liable for the actions of its officer the central issues is whether the city should be held accountable answerable answerable accountable or answerable for officer rogers alleged misconduct who is responsible for it is it state or that officer you have to decide so this is what facts says you have discussed the entire issue that how this thing happened and who is responsible now the state government is responsible or that person who is doing the duty is responsible this is what your fact is now further introduction is done facts is done you will talk about issues what are the issues that are uh finally to be focused upon so the primary issue before the court is whether the city of amwood can be held liable for the action of the police officer 
that I have already told you. So, you have to decide whether primary source is whether that officer is responsible for this or not. If that uh, officer is responsible under the doctrine of municipal liability, so you must know that under the doctrine of municipal liability, you must know about the statute, right? You must know about the statute that under the doctrine of municipal liability, whether this person is actually responsible for all the mishappening. Additionally, the court must consider whether qualified immunity shields officer Rogers from personal liability, whether this immunity shields, shields is cover, provide, provide uh, shelter or provide some kind of uh, uh, as a savior, it can be used as a savior. So, is it a shield which can, which can provide a, uh, a kind of, um, you can say, uh, which can provide a kind of uh, um, uh, shield to rescue officer Roger from all the things that has happened, from all the mishaps that has happened. So, these are two issues, primary whether city is responsible, state government is responsible or if that, uh, does it allow officer Roger to use that uh, municipal liability as a shield to protect himself. So, this is the issue. Fourth one is decision. So, what is the decision of the court? This is what court comment is all about, beta. So, you must remember all my dear learners that you should focus on the decision also. And court held the city of Ambud could be held liable for the actions of officer under the doctrine of municipal liability. Yes. So, what the court decided that yes, whatever actions is uh, doing is done by that uh, Roger, that police officer. Yes, city is responsible for it. City of Amwood could be held liable for this. The court reasoned that the city's failure to provide adequate training to and supervision for its officers contributed to the alleged misconduct. That means, court is responsible, city provision is responsible or municipal city uh, like uh, system has failed to give the proper training to these police officers uh, because of uh, uh, conducting in such a manner. So, as a result, the city was found responsible for Smith's injury. So, this is the, dis uh, this is the whole dis uh, decision that was taken. So, after that, what is the analysis? This decision has significant implications for both municipal liability and qualified immunity in cases of police misconduct, where city takes the responsibility of all the misconduct. And it underscores the importance of municipalities ensuring that their law enforcement officers receive proper training and supervisions to prevent misconduct and excessive forces. So, it is a kind of shield for all those police officers who are involved in that misconduct. This is our analysis. And furthermore, the ruling clarifies that qualified immunity should not shield officers from accountability when their actions clearly violate established constitutional rights. Whatever rights are given to by the constitution right to liberty. So, you cannot actually overlook uh, that one. This decision aligns with recent judicial trends seeking to hold law enforcement officers accountable for misconduct. So, therefore, it could be used as a legal precedence, precedence for further uh, cases that were uh, uh, like you can say applied or maybe like uh, filed against those police officers for misconduct. Finally, last but not the least, the conclusion part, which is again a very important part of case comment. In Smith versus City of Amwood, the country's, the court's decision expands the scope of municipal liability while emphasizing the need for accountability in cases of police misconduct. Municipalities must prioritize proper training. So, this is how you can definitely draft a conclusion. So, it should not serve as a blanket defense for officers who engage in excessive and unreasonable uses of force. So, there has to be a strict gun power control on the police authorities, right. So, after that conclusion, obviously, you can definitely give such kind of like remarks where some kind of restriction should be mentioned, should be levied upon these people, where 
uh, all these municipal immunity could not be used as a shield or as a blanket to defend these people for misconduct. So, I have come up with some more examples like Roe versus Wade, a landmark decision for reproductive rights. This is the case which happened in 1973 against the abortion and women rights for that. So, this is again a very important uh, landmark cases of US where we talk about the introduction first of all. It will talk about the, uh, the whole course, the whole uh, case in 1973 Supreme Court states the court decided stands as a pivotal moment in the history of reproductive rights in the United States. This case actually comments, examines the background legal issues. Yes, obviously you are going to write down the similar type of things. Right. So, you are going to write down the year and the entire use of all these uh, things. Then facts, same format will be followed, facts. Now, looking at the facts, that means all the things that you have acquired about that case. The case originated in Texas when Jane Roe, a pseudonym for Norma McCorry, filed a suit, lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the state's abortion laws. Because State abortion laws says that it is a crime to abort a child and thereafter women cannot do that, to not do uh, that particular thing. So, Texas law criminalized abortion except to save the lives of the mother. This is the actual fact. So, if, if the mother is about to rescue that definitely it could be done, but in other cases no. McCauley Corway, the pregnant woman seeking an abortion, argued that this restriction violated her right to privacy. So, this is the case, this is actually the case of 1973 when this lady Jane Roe actually filed a lawsuit for providing, for uh, actually coming up for, um, for, or you can say seeking the right to privacy. because. Obviously, nobody can stop anyone to do this, but according to legal authorities and law, you cannot actually overcome them. So, this is a case comment where the facts are there, but please remember, do not be emotional, do not be emotional, avoid subjective note. Whenever you write uh, case comments, be very objective. You cannot write your own personal opinions. Personal opinions can be come, can definitely be a part of your analytical skills, analytical uh, description, but not over here. So, coming up with that part, next one is issues. What are the issues that he is going to deliver? That here uh, the things are going to be discussed. The primary issue before the court was whether a woman's right to choose have an abortion fell within the constitutional right to privacy. So, this is the issue whether the right to abort a child comes in the constitutional right of privacy. So, this is the issue. Now, decision. Let us talk about the decision because there has to be a pattern, introduction, fact, issues and then decision. In a 7 to 2 decision, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Roe. Justice Harry Blackman writing for the majority held that women's rights to choose have a an abortion was protected under the constitutional right to privacy. So, she was given the right to choose the uh, like whether she wants to bear that baby or not, that child or not. So, this is this is her right to actually choose it then and it actually comes in the right to privacy. The court established a trimester framework allowing states to regulate abortion in the second and third trimesters to protect motherhood, maternal health and potential fatal life. So, this was divided into three trimesters and in that in the second and third trimester also in order to save the life of the fetus and fatal life and maternal health one can go on with this. However, during the first trimester the decision have to, to have an abortion was left to the discretion of the pregnant woman and her physician. Recently also all these like uh, in uh, in US there is it is it is a burning topic where 
abortion um, like going on with abortion rights this is actually like prohibited or uh, but uh, yes of course over here it has not been like uh, it's like that so let's see in analysis in analysis part the roe versus wade decision marked a significant shift in us abortion policies and jurisprudence it affirmed a woman's right to make choices about her own body and further about his her own reproductive health emphasizing the importance of personal autonomy so this is what the decision is and then further we come to the conclusion part which is again a very important one here you come up with your analytical skills and and before that you have already analyzed over here and after analysis you come to that conclusion part where roe versus wade remains a touchstone in decisions discussions about reproductive rights and privacy it has faced ongoing legal challenges and political controversy the decisions enduring impact on american society and ongoing debates surrounding it make a cornerstone of constitutional law so it can be used as a touchstone right and the cornerstone because this is going to be a legal precedence for further cases that are going to come up in conclusion roe and wade is a landmark case that continues to shape legal political and social discourse in the united states its legacy underscores the delicate balance between the women's rights to privacy and women's right to choose her motherhood so these are few important things and uh, yes of course use proper punctuation tense consistency this is very important active passive voices then formal tone we have already gone through each and everything one by one and transitional phrases like suppose if you want to connect two things together please be very particular using all those connecting connecting adverbs and conjunctions like furthermore in addition however so through this you can definitely uh, like connect two things together in a way to provide some kind of like uh, connectivity or consistency of ideas legal terminologies this is really very important legal maxims this is very important legal maxims and use of legal phrases idioms because they are very important when you go for legal term legal writing factual subject matter and hypothetical cases what are the things that you are going to involve parties who are involved in that background events that are there related to that case then key facts which are related to that location people involved then decisions actions further you could talk about the legal claims that we are going to discuss on that for example in personal injury case the plaintiff may claim negligence on the part of the defendant then further you must talk about the disputed issues what are the disputed issues maybe the parties disagree and are seeking legal resolution sometimes legal relevance chronological order objective tone many other things that are actually you have to find out facts doesn't mean that data and figures only you have to come up with all these things what are the disputed issues what are legal re relevance what are chronological order objective tone many others so and so forth so there there is a different slight difference between case law and case comments case law and case comments are entirely two sectors two uh, like sides of that coin where case law is actually known as the precedent or judicial decisions it refers to the collection of past legal decisions and judgments on the other hand case comments are written analysis and discussions about particular legal case they are not the actual decisions of the court but rather scholarly or legal decisions discussions on interpretations so these are the things where case laws and case comments are different from each other so in order to at the end obviously i would like to say few words to you that please write in an effective case comments and rely on mastering english language nuances everyone because clarity precision formality are key notes of this thing and continuously try to refine your skills so these are the references that i have focused a few other uh, these are the further references where i have come up with the perfect version of case comments taking some landmark cases also
I, Dr. Divya Gupta, signing off for now. And I hope that you are uh, that I'm trying to give you. You all will acquire the of writing in a proper perfect. So thank you everyone. Thank you all.